Hey, welcome back to another episode of Whiskey Wisdom. Tonight, we're going to be talking about five bottles that are currently on each of our respective radar. Come back and see us and see if any of these are on your respective radar. All right, guys, welcome back. We're excited for this episode. If you haven't yet, check out our socials in the description below. Subscribe if you haven't. Consider it, please. Uh, and today, we are actually not going to be getting hammered. Right? No, so hopefully. Is, oh, oh, well, not on this episode. Maybe not until after we're done shooting. <laughs> right. Today, what we're going to do is, this has been a thing that's been going on for a while. We haven't done one yet. I thought it would be interesting to do where we go over five bottles of different topics. Uh, and the first topic would be daily drinkers. Daily drinkers. Daily drinkers. So, what is your current daily drinker right now? Well, I've got to tell you, I've been sipping on... This is such a great daily drink. Weller Special Reserve. Now I know a lot of you out there can't find this. I get it. If you can't find it, it's hard to be a daily drinker. However, we've been able to find it pretty easily at one yeah. of the stores near us. Duncan Corners, right? That's the one. Duncan Corners Package Store. Shout out to yeah. Robert. If you guys are in our area, go see him. Great guy. Uh, helps us out quite a bit. And yeah, they've got... I went and got one. Uh, actually, this is my bottle. It is your bottle. Yeah. My, mine is about... <laughs> that full yeah I, I went and got one last night uh and it's interesting because you told me initially that this is a mixer not a sipper so that's what that. it was what, what people thought it was until it got a following it, and until they learned better right they just thought it was a mixer. sometimes you've got to learn but i've been sipping on this uh usually neat sometimes over a cube don't shoot me really dude okay Enjoy it how you want to enjoy it. Like, I, I hear you. I hear you. Put I orange you. juice in it if you want. Oh, don't do that. Don't put orange juice in it, people. <laughs> no, yeah, but I, I've been sitting out on my back patio at night uh, with a nice spicy cigar, having a, yeah. a nice blend of this, and it really fits the bill. This, to me, this was like a really spicy bottle, so I'm surprised you wouldn't want to pair that with something so spicy. Well, it's got, so being weeded, it's got the sweet yeah, front end, spicy enough. backside. Fair enough. Do I have the Legends weeded? I don't think I we yeah, do. I do. Yes, we do. Have it. Yes, we do. Well, I know you do. I don't know if I have it. No, no, you do. Yeah, I know. I know. I, I remember buying it. Yep. That one's, uh, I think the Legends is sweeter than that. But this, I, I, I like this bottle. I don't know if it would be on my my radar. My, I got two, actually. My current daily sipper is uh, Woodford Double Oaks. Um, do you want to hear something funny? Okay. I've never tried that. Get out of here. Never had it. Kidding? I have had your other bottle that's tied with this one, but I have not had this one. Wait, what do you mean my other bottle that's tied with this? You've got a bottle off camera. Oh, you said yeah. it was tied with this for right. your daily yeah, drinker. Yeah, yeah, I have yeah. had that one and I enjoy it also. <sighs> this one I have not tried. That's so funny to me. So I was at, there's a uh, bourbon bar that's actually near our area. Mm -hmm. And I went there uh, on a date night and asked for an old fashioned and it was one of the best old fashions I've ever had in my life. You know what's and funny is I was watching I browse YouTube whiskey videos all the time now since this is our life. And I was uh, two or three different whiskey channels both pouted this. This is the double oaked, right? Yes. The Woodford yeah. double oaked as a great bourbon yeah. for cocktails. Uh, okay. That's well, that's interesting. Um, but well, well, anyway, so and I asked her, it was so good because I've had a million yeah. old fashions, a million different types of bourbon and old fashions, uh, including the, the greatest old fashioned ever made up here, people. Yeah. If you want to check it out. Um, and I asked her, I said, what did you mix? Because I didn't specify, just to give me an old fashioned. Sure. And she told me when they don't specify, I always use Woodford Double Oak. And I was like, give me a shot of this neat and fell in love with it. I, I, I had never had it in, I've had millions of Wood, Woodford reserves, but not the specific Double Oak. So why I like this bottle, I actually have like four more bottles behind me of this. Wow, you have backups to your backup. Well, I do because what happens is I always enjoy something and then it just goes away or they yeah. stop making it yeah. or it goes to like a million dollars a bottle. So yeah, so why <laughs> why I like this so much and why I would consider it an, an easy daily drinker is because it's reasonably, reasonably priced. You can find this in our area between 49 and like 50 and 60 bucks. Sure. And it's very findable, mm -hmm. very findable. Mm -hmm. um, but I make a note that if I open one, I buy another one because that, that's literally how much I enjoy it. Now, real Fair quick, because I'm sure we're running short on time. The other one I would say is a close second would be the Rare Breed. This is really findable for us. I've heard some people say that it's not. I, I think this during COVID, this was a lot harder to find, but I think this is pretty findable for everybody. Yeah, when I first started yeah. thinking about whiskeys and, and bourbons, 
this wasn't as findable. It seems yeah. to have come around lately yeah. in our area. Yeah, yeah, I would agree. But if I were to pick one, it would definitely be this, uh, just for the findability cost and the, and the flavor. And we're gonna have to have you taste it. Absolutely. Before today's ever. Mm -hmm. So, all right, that's our daily drinker. We're gonna move on to the next one. Mixer. Cheap mixer. So where are you going with that one? Where am I going with cheap mixer? Cheap well, mixer. I don't make a lot of cocktails at home yet. I don't have a lot of the accoutrement. I'm just getting into the bourbon life. So mostly what I mix with is ginger ale or Coke. And what I've been doing that with is, and if you've seen our first episode, you know what it is. Yeah, come on. Yeah. Makes a great bourbon and Coke, better than Jack Daniels. Go see our episode, I'm telling you, I love it. This was, I believe the first episode we published publicly. Right. We did, we did a couple episodes prior to launching and this bottle, I mean, you, I don't know if you can see, uh, I, I think I have a replacement. I hope I do. Do I have a replacement over there? You do. Uh, continues to impress me. Not only that, now I can appreciate this is probably a local thing for us. I don't know how widespread this bottle It is a Georgia is. thing. It is. What I can tell you though, is at least two times mm -hmm. at um, Conley's yep. and Cork and Keg. Okay. Somebody walked up to us and was like, this is a great bottle. I've not tried with yeah. Steve Rickman. Yeah, yeah. And, and we found out a few the places. lady at Conley's was like, "Yeah, come on, remember that? Yeah, come on." Yeah. So yeah. this bottle, I have to agree with you. Um, so cheap. Twenty. Twenty four ninety nine. Twenty four ninety five. Twenty five bucks. Okay. Yep. I agree with you. Uh, I, I, Go ahead. My wife. Come my on. wife actually enjoys this. She was a high school <laughs> drinker of Jack Daniels, and has switched over to Yeah, come on. Yeah, it's it's a great one. Mine is uh, pretty common, uh, Evan Williams, and you can see how much I've used. I actually have a, the larger bottle too. The old standby. Uh, this is a great cheap, really cheap mixer. I think for the large bottle, I paid 22 bucks, I think. Uh, and then Turkey 101, pretty standard. Both old standbys, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, th these are higher proof, got some good flavors. I've heard Old Grand 114 is a great cheap mixer. I do have the bottle now. Coming soon. But I haven't tasted it yet. Still closed. I'm really excited. Uh, so maybe maybe Old Granddad will sneak in. Uh, maybe. Maybe. On the next one. But anyways. So what I'll say about these two is, I believe the last Old Fashioned you made me since the uh, $200 Old Fashioned video was with Evan Williams Bottle and Bond. Yeah, I'm sure it was. And I enjoyed it quite a bit. And I like Wild Turkey 101 over ice. Yeah. yeah. Love uh, it over ice. Yeah, okay. I do. Uh, Wild Turkey 101, and, and again, it is very findable. Um, I think the price is like slowly creeping up on it now. Still great though. But definitely a staple. Uh, it, it should be a staple in anybody's collection. Yep. Uh, so Agreed. Everybody should have a bottle of Wild Turkey 101. Most definitely. All right. So that's the cheap mixer. We got to do another jump cut. You ready? So maybe we can snap. Okay. Right. Friday Night Pour. Friday Night Pour oh. is our is our next category. No, that's good. You just asked me if you were going to do it. You're cool. You're cool. Oh, dude, that shirt is so soft. You love this shirt. I know you do. Dude, that was... I know. I'm going to stop touching you now. That was... All right. So... <laughs> Next category, everybody, is Friday Night Pork. Shirt that soft, dude. It's 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 what not, is it's, this? It's no, it's it's a cotton poly blend, man. Even no, no big okay. All right, it's from the big and fat man store. Lord, yeah, yeah. They, <laughs> I'm sure all that <laughs> skin is nice. That's right, soft. baby. That's right. <laughs> all right, Friday Night Pork. It's Friday night. You're hanging out with your friends. You're all sitting outside on a warm yeah. night or a cool night. I don't know. Picture whatever you'd like, whatever. and this is what you break out to share with your friends. This was a tough one for me. This was an easy one for me. This, yeah, see, these are all tough for me. All right, go ahead, you go first. Eagle Rare, baby. Yeah. Delicious, one of the first bourbons I was introduced to, thanks to Matt here. Uh, it, it goes down smooth, you don't need anything with it. it. It's just a great sip. It is a great bottle, and in our area, very, fi so findable that- Recently. I, yeah, I think I even gave you a bottle. That's how findable it is. Um, he was just getting into whiskey and I was like, dude, we had a blind taste test. I, we should have recorded that. How brilliant would that have We should have. Uh, anyways, very fine. I can't, we go to gas stations and it's at gas stations. I mean, it's like, it's ridiculous. <laughs> All over the place. And, I don't yeah, know how to get I know, away this, from it. This is, uh, yeah, this, everywhere. Is our, this is our Bruzel's Knob Creek 12. <laughs> um, but I, I can't tell you how many people that I see constantly, they'll talk about they've got like a quarter left. And they're like, I haven't seen one in three years. I'm not going to replace it. I, I literally think I've got nine bottles up there so this is early in my whiskey bourbon <laughs> life and uh i have probably 20 bottles 21 bottles they're so full this is oh, oh i thought you meant of eagle rare no no oh okay. yeah 21 okay. bottles total <laughs> yeah, yeah this is the only bottle yeah. so far that i have backups for that's yeah. how much i enjoy it no kidding yep. so oh that's so fascinating to me i guess you're right too 
or I, I guess I agree with you. Um, I just, I don't think of it that because I have so many of them. You do have quite a few bottles, yeah. Yeah, but, and, you, but I agree with you. If I got down to two and I cracked one open, I would not, I would not finish it until I replaced the other one. I agree. I, this is a great bottle. All right, mine w was tough. Um, I went with the Forgate Split Stave. Delicious bottle. Oh boy. Uh, if you haven't seen the review for this, I think we did this on its own, right? The Split Stave review on its own. I'll we put, did. I'll put a card up here. The origin of the whiskey gasm. Yeah, this yeah. was uh, shockingly good. It was and really good. I constantly go back to this and re enjoy it. I only have one more bottle of this. Uh, it, this is so tough to like fit these bottles into this category, but like for sure Friday nights, I I've, I've done that, literally done that. Not even because thinking of the category, but it's like, ah, it's the end of the week. I'll grab myself some split, split this, this day. This is not a cheap bottle folks. No, I know that's yeah. Uh, so yeah, I, 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 you can't go wrong with that bottle. So, so, but you cannot go wrong with that $45 bottle, bottle? 42, 42, I've seen it some places, 42. 42. Yeah. And two seventy? One fifty nine. Well, okay, that's not as bad as I thought. One fifty nine. Yeah. That's actually not terrible. It's not horrible. It's not. Uh, I do have one backup of this. And I will be very sad when that bottle is. Absolutely. Gone. So no, the my, my final note on these two is worth the hunt, worth the price. Brilliant. Yeah. Agreed. All right. So next bottle. Ready? All right, so our next category for the evening is impress your guests. Yep. So you have guests over. They may or may not be bourbon people, whiskey people, and you're trying to be a little bit impressive. Oh, well, that would skew my opinion then if they're not bourbon people. I would just want them to try something that I enjoy. That's how I look at it. That's fair, and, and this is how you look at it. Yeah. Okay. All right. All right, so you go first. So I, I was a little bit torn on this one, so I may have this two is, choices this also. Is so, hard. so my first choice was Colonel E.H. Taylor Small Batch. Now, my reasoning for this is not necessarily that it's the greatest bourbon. I do enjoy it. It is a very good pour, but it's the story behind it. If you're if you're entertaining guests, they're getting into the history or the lore of bourbon and whiskey. Uh, if you know the story of Colonel E.H. Taylor, he was on the commission that decided what the rules for bottled in bond whiskey would be during Prohibition. So there's a there's a good story there. It's a good icebreaker, and it's a really great bourbon. So that's why I chose that one. Now. Depending on my audience that evening, I may break out the Jack Daniels Sinatra Select. Uh, one, because I think it's probably going to be delicious to a broader group of people. And everybody knows Sinatra, you know? So you can this, talk about Sinatra all day. This is a great story, too. So the story is that with this, I think I told you he was mm -hmm. on stage. And this is at the time when JD, nobody knew who JD was. Right. And he, oh, oh, I can't believe he called it like the nectar of the gods or the bourbon of the something gods. Like that. Something, yeah, yeah. something like that when he was doing, <clears throat> and then everybody was like, <clears throat> okay, I'm, I'm, you okay though? I'm Matt, done. Matt is now having a little bit of a respiratory issue. Uh, yeah, uh, I got JD COVID. <clears throat> <laughs> <laughs> and so JD, I think they're, I don't know if their sales increased because of that. And so JD, oh, they definitely did. JD made sure that wherever Sinatra was, he had JD with him, right? And, all and this is the blend that he would right. have known. Yeah, JD has kind of, I assume, changed their formula over the years or changed their aging process or whatever. But this is supposed to be as close to how it was back then. And you know, he, I think it even says like what two fingers or two cubes, two, two fingers. fingers. Yeah, two, two yeah. fingers, one cube or something. I don't know. It's delicious. It, it's like it's like you're sipping sweet pipe tobacco. Awesome. Now, what I will tell you is. It definitely is different than the regular seven, for sure. Absolutely, yeah, much and better. And much this better. was the one that won your first blind test, blind taste it test did. you ever did. It sure did. I gave him a bunch of different bottles, and he came across this one and was like, "Oh, that's so good!" And I was like, "Oh, he's gonna be so heartbroken." I loved it so much, I catered a <laughs> bottle for quite a bit I, of money. Look, hey, look. I had, this is all I have left in this one, and uh, I catered a bottle too. I've got one more bottle. It, it, it's a great pour. So. Really good. I agree with you, but good good stories on both of these, I think. All right, what do you got, Matt? Okay, so what is this again? This is Impress Your Guest. Impress guess. Your Guest. Th this one's tough for me. Um, I think I might bust out the Remus 5. Uh, I've heard Remus 3 is better. I actually have every Remus 1 through 6. I haven't tried the 3 yet. 
uh, Remus 5. In fact, this is all that I have left of my first Remus 5. I've got this bottle and one more, and then that's it. Uh, took this over to my mom's one weekend. Uh, shout out to my mom. <laughs> and we went through, this is all that was left of the first bottle. Right. The Ironically, you also gave me a pour of this the same day I had my first pour of Sinatra. Did I really? You what did. Do you remember what you thought of it? Uh, I enjoyed it, but I think it was a little bit complex for me at the time. Yeah. I'd probably love it. Now. You should revisit this. Definitely. This is, it's very, Remus is hit or miss. It's like, like six I've heard is awful. Yeah, I've heard those uh, rumors well, too. Let me rephrase that. Not that it's awful. It's just not the best. It, right. it, it's not better than five. Sure. Right. And you're not going to have every year. You're not going to beat out the previous year. That's sure. Gonna you're not going to hit it out of the park every time. Yeah. I think six, if I remember correctly, the blend was like significantly younger whiskeys. Mm -hmm. um, and the blend on this one was all, I mean, you see like 2005, 2006, 2006, 2008. Sure. Yeah. So, so they're the, older. The youngest yeah. one in here is 2008. Right. Right. Um, very caramely, very, very smooth. So good. Did I, you say the youngest was 2008? Yeah. Isn't that a 15 year whiskey? Let me just verify that's correct. Yeah, 2008. Wow. 54%. When was it bottled though? It may not be a true 15 year. I don't know. This is the 2021 medley. I don't know. Okay. This is, this is series five. So damn, that's yeah, that's a good blend. This, this was the first bourbon that I had that I remember thinking, I've had this bottle for a real long time. Um, like how how sweet bourbons can be. This oh yeah, it's just it's so mm -hmm. good, so good. The only thing that I would tie with this, here we go, just because it's so unique. And when you pulled this one off the shelf, I was slightly jealous. Yeah, the yeah. Fra the Frey Ranch. It is so wow. unique and so good. We did a review. Here's the card for it of Frey Ranch. Uh, in fact, we were just talking before we started shooting the Frey Ranch video. We did is somehow just blowing up. We're getting a lot of comments on it. If you can find this in your area. Pick it up. Not only for its uniqueness, uh -huh. but just the overall flavor. This is, it is such a rock solid bottle. Uh, the, yeah, really unique flavor. Ah, uh, dude. Uh, really good, really delicious, really beautiful bottle. The, the bottle is gorgeous. And I, again, I try not to let bottle aesthetics, you know, uh, skew my opinion on things, but um, love what they're doing. I, I, this is just, it's, it's so unique and so great. I would want to bring this out just to say, hey, Try it. Try this out. Yeah, it's absolutely. So, so unique. Absolutely. So, anyways, all right. That's it. You want to say anything else about any, any of these? The last thing I'd say about the Frey Ranch is this is something you could break out even if you have seasoned whiskey or bourbon drinkers because it's yeah. so unique. I agree. Yeah. I agree. Yeah. All right. That's the one. Ready? Last category. Yeah. Special occasion. Special <laughs> occasion. What, what, where am I? What are we doing? What are we doing? Special right, occasion. So I'm going to start with something. He busted my balls off camera. I really did. For about 10 minutes because I, I picked something that I thought was interesting, but it's not whiskey related at all, but it's definitely something I would do. You're going to put it on the table anyway. I am going to. All right. I'm doing it. Uh, so this is a, I'm going to have to do some B-roll footage because you guys won't be able to see this. This is actually a gin, uh, but this is, I mean, if you can see, it says UK only. I had this, uh, uh, be careful how I say this. Um, I procured this bottle. Yes. Legally. Yes. And this is made with botanicals from the Queen's Royal Garden before she passed. Now, I completely understand why this would be a drink to break out on a special occasion. Yeah. Great story. Uh, I make this gin, too. And, and you can see, like, I'm not... I actually have drunk, drunk you have. of it. Now, do you, do you sip a gin? Do you... How do you so, drink gin? People do sip gin. I am not like the gin, like the super hardcore gin people. They'll go, oh, they like put it all. <laughs> Wait, they like are they super like, hardcore gin people all chipmunks? Cover all nine thousand taste bud. Aerate it, warm it up. They like <laughs> get it on the roof of their mouth and they do that kind of like padding noise and like, oh, a little bit of lemon, oh, a little bit. Of yeah, <laughs> you, you should go watch how how gin gin people. Coming uh, soon. It's gin, yeah. Gin wisdom. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> gin genius. Anyway, so I, I do sip it in the beginning because I want to experience what the... Because every gin, you know, it's different botanicals. They, sure. It's different. It, in, in, uh, they As with any way. spirit. Sure. Um, but anyways, great story. And I, th this is a very, you know, you can't find this bottle. I'll give it to you on the story. You can't Definitely. find it in the U.S. at all. Yeah. And uh, so this is like when people come over and they're like, hey, let me have a gin and tonic or do you have any gin? Great piece to pull out uh, as a special occasion to kind of talk about it. And fair enough. 
All right, I know it's not whiskey, so let's get back to the whiskey side. So this was so tough, tough for me. What is happening? I don't know. This is really tough for me because <laughs> we've got so many bottles that we haven't tried that I really want to um, get to. Mm. Some of them may um, fall into this category in the future. We just haven't tried right, so, yet. But for now, um, and he's going to pull out a bottle that I agree with too, but I wanted to do something different. This is a... Uh, it's not like... Guero. Pronounce that correctly. Guero. Guero. 17 year. You need to splice uh, Chaz in here saying Guero. Yeah, exactly. Uh, this one is is definitely an interesting bottle with a with an interesting story too. Uh, it was a guy who worked, I think, like uh, collecting hay or weed or something. Something like that. And, Harvesting something. And uh, the the workers gave them the nickname Guero, which I think translates roughly. I don't know if I say what it translates to, but basically white boy. Yeah. And uh, anyways, so there was a, the guy that was at the mega package store actually gave us like a lot more history on that. And I don't remember yeah. what said. We really should have recorded that. Um, very smooth, if I remember correctly. Yes, it was. For yes, 17, it was. 17 year. I, what's the proof on this? 108 proof. Yeah. That surprises yeah. me, actually. I, I was thinking maybe lower than that. Very smooth drinker. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I have never seen this bottle ever. And now I can't stop running into it. It's like everywhere I go, I see yeah. this, this blue bottle. Now. Sometimes the pink one, too, which is not quite as the aged, pink, I think. The pink one, I think, is 14 years. Right. And I've heard that one's not nearly as good as the blue one. Um, Wouldn't mind trying it though. So, and then the only other one I'll mention too is is the uh, is a Calumet. 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 Sixteen. Which is what we actually what we're here. sipping right now. <laughs> I was trying to. I haven't had it in a really long time, uh, but I do kind of go back to it. I didn't remember what it tasted like. Very nice. Very nice. Very quintessential bourbon, though. Yeah, that's not bad. Yeah, good that's stuff. Not bad. Good stuff. But I do think. I just wanted to bring some bottles out to talk about them for special occasion stuff. I do think Mr. Brandon's bottle is the best one, though. This is actually Matt's bottle, but I do have one. Thank goodness. Yeah. Good old stag. My goodness, is this a great bottle. We've experienced this for the first time recently. Uh, Chaz, Matt, and I sitting around a fire, and it was absolutely video delicious. If you want to see our stag review, I'll put the card. So good. Syrupy mouthfeel, uh, cinnamon fireball flavor, just absolutely long finish. Beautiful, delicious bottle. Delicious bottle. Can't say enough good things about the stag. Agreed. And who nailed the little bitter note? That was who Matt. That? Matt nailed the bitter note There's... in the flavor spiral for stag bourbon. Everyone needs to know this. That's right, because my palate was incredible. It was amazing. Um, <laughs> I agree with everything you said. I want to stop drinking this until I go find another bottle. I think I know where I can go grab another one and I may go spend the money to get it. The reason it's a special occasion is it's delicious, it's so pretty hard, hard to find in our area and rather expensive. In our area, this is like almost impossible to find. Um, I, I agree with everything you said. Super cinnamon, bitter cinnamon, and I don't mean bitter in a negative way. It's just, it's not like a sweet right. cinnamon. There's a little bit of this dilute. I think the way that I described it was like this diluted honey note on the end. Yes. That sort of turns into like a bitter. And I hate saying this. I'm just trying to give you guys uh, a way to to imagine the taste. Like that aspartame bitter note that comes out of like that sweet, like on a diet soda. Or like a sweet beer. Yeah, yeah. There's this little bitter note, like on the, like as you continue talking after you drank it, that just kind of pops up. Oh, but, all I can think about is the finish now, though, that we're discussing this bottle. Oh. What a great finish. But you know how to solve that bitter note, right? Like there's a solution to the bitter note for that. You take another sip, baby. Take Absolutely. Take another sip. If you can find this in your area, if you can pick up a bottle, if you can grab a pour at a, a tasting or a bar, do so. It, you won't worry yeah, about it. I, I always recommend that if you guys are interested in something, but you don't want to spend the money, you can either listen to other people who have wa wasted or spent their money on it. <laughs> Uh, and give their, get, you know, then you hear the notes that we described. If it's something that you're interested in, then you can maybe fork out the money for it. Or, and somebody actually made a comment on, I think the stag actually video where he said that he found a place that would give him a $15 pour, oh. uh, but he, he didn't enjoy it though. But, but everyone's taste is different and he saved himself, uh, quite a bit of money <laughs> of, of the bottle. So I paid two twenty nine, I think, I. Was, which I know is insane. Uh, but again, I, this is the first one in six years, I think. Yeah. It's the first place, place I've we've ever seen, seen sitting yeah. out ever. I've never seen this bottle. So really crappy. I had to pay that much. So was delicious. it worth it? You know what? I think the 229 price point just makes it even that much more sweeter. <laughs> the the, 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 the <laughs> one word to describe this bottle is decadent. It's yeah. decadent. Yeah, this bottle. So good. 
so good. We may have to. Oh, my, and my cork started disintegrating. What the hell is that all about? Be man? careful. Just be super careful. Slide it home. There you go. There. You Leave go. it to me to have the, the one stag with a disintegrating <laughs> cork. I would drink it with cork bits in it. It's that good. It's that good. All right, that's it. Uh, Daily drinker, cheap mixer, Friday night pour, impressor guest, and special that's occasion. Any other final comments? No. And I promised we were going to do an episode without drinking, and here we are drinking. Too bad. It's what we do. Thanks, guys, for watching this episode. I know it was a little bit longer of an episode than we normally do. Uh, I was wanting to do this. And again, like I said in the beginning, these are bottles that we have experienced. I know I've got plenty behind us that we haven't experienced yet. We'll do this again in six months, a year. And Absolutely. See what changes. Hey, throw it in the comments. What are, you, what are your picks for these categories? Yes. Let us know. And if you see something behind us that you think is better than what we chose, put in the comment. What would you like us to try? Write, Write it out. one down, and uh, and we'll we'll do a comparison. You know, maybe we'll say, okay, uh, somebody does this for a special occasion. We'll do a comparison. On the next episode of Drink Matt's Whiskey. Check out our, so <laughs> check out our socials in the description below. We got a link tree. got a website. Uh, my wife's doing all our Instagram stuff, so we're finally starting to ramp up all of our social stuff. Think about subscribing, guys. Yeah, if you haven't subscribed, give it a shot. You know, uh, tell us tell us what you like to see, and uh, we will try to make that happen for you. Until next time, cheers. Cheers. Drink responsibly, and we'll see you guys on the next episode. Have a good one, guys. Hey, welcome back to another episode of Whiskey Wisdom. Tonight, we're going to be talking about five bottles each that are currently on our radar that we're enjoying. Stick with us and see if any of them are on your radar. All right. Good. If you're good with it, I can redo it. I can always do another take. Let's do one more. Yeah, because I, I like awkwardly look to the left. All right. Stuff. Yeah. All right. Go for it. Currently enjoy it. it. You're enjoying it. Yeah. Sure. I got you. Even got better. You. Even better. All right. Okay. <clears throat> Don't be a dick, man. I was about to start. You want me to do the intro on this one or sure? Do this. Yeah, it's your, hey, it's your bottle. <clears throat> oh, here we go. Here we go. <laughs> here we go. I, I'm gonna try to like smile and be like personable. <laughs> Fuck up, dude. What? You're killing me every time I try to start. You're talking. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> Remember, there's a whole audience of people here. Right, right. Stay engaged. There's like 30 people here. Right. And they're all naked. <laughs> so that's not. Yeah. Are they high naked or bad? Good name. This guy, guy doing squats. <laughs> ah! Oh, gosh. What is happening? <laughs> Outtakes. Yeah, this is the kind of stuff we go through. Yeah. Okay, thank you, bud. All right, we're going to be shooting, so shoot that one, and then... All right. I love you, bud. I have this little pussy straw like an idiot. All right, go ahead. Hey, welcome back to another episode of Wisty. Wh fuck. I do that too. Wisty. Wisty. So weird. Yeah. All right, so this is... Oh, you you go. This is impressive. Okay, so we're coming oh, back with... Let's just start. All right, ready? Let's try, ready? <laughs>